so for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm I'm Holly Page. Um, I'm a, a trail runner or fell runner, sky runner, all sorts of different types of running um, with Adidas Terex. Um, and um, today I was asked to, to do a live stream with sports shoes um, and to talk about all sorts of different things. So I thought I'd put it out there um, to, to everybody to ask some different questions. So I've received lots of questions um, on my own personal Instagram and then um, sports shoes themselves have, have had lots of questions um, which they've sent over to me to answer today. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I thought I'd just start off with a little bit of background. Um, so, as I say, I'm, I'm a, an off-road runner and have been doing so kind of all my life, really. Um, and, um, yeah, um, I've kind of loved to travel around. Um, running takes me to lots of different places. Um, but even when I'm not running, I love traveling to different places. And it's, it's um, given me the opportunity to, to go to, to visit um, new countries, meet new people, learn lots of things, um, which is which is really great. Um, so um, I thought I'd start off by answering a few of the questions. Um, I got quite a weird question this morning um, from somebody, um, which was, "Are you single and looking for love?" Um, which wasn't particularly relevant, I didn't think. Um, and the answer is no. So that one's that first um, question is answered. Um, and but anyway um another question was um another question i got um was um how did i come to be sponsored by adidas um well i mean i've spent my whole life running with no sponsor um mostly uh, just running with with local clubs and like when i was at university running there um and then kind of doing my own thing i traveled around a lot um going to different races but doing it all off my own back i guess um and then at the um the end of 2018 i'd had quite a good year um a lot of people didn't really know who i was or where i'd come from and people thought i'd just um emerged on the scene from nowhere um and i'd i'd won this sky running world series and um, the classic version of that um and done done well in the there's a golden trail world series and managed to run for for Britain which was really cool and like really unexpected um so I think that kind of put me on people's radar a little bit more um so rather than me then kind of doing everything myself I I was really lucky to have um various different sponsors approach me and um and I could actually make that choice um which is really cool. Um and so I've been I've been running with Adidas Terex for the last year, um year and a half now. Um and yeah, it's been really great to have that team behind me. Um they're really flexible and let me do whichever races I want, which um sometimes is a bit few too many races. Um but um but yeah, I like to like to just keep my weekends busy with races when I can when we're not on a lockdown. <laughs> Um, another question I got was, do I prefer fell running or sky running? Um, well, I've been a fell runner, yeah, all my life really. I spent my childhood going to fell races to, to watch my dad race and, and like walking up mountains and playing in rivers and things like that. So yeah, I've always loved fell racing. Um, and I've only really discovered sky racing. My first one was in back in 2016. So reasonably recently, really, um, and I do love that I do love sky running. Um, it's great. It takes me to wonderful places, and I've met some amazing people. Um, but um, yeah, I think at the end of the day, I'd have to say I prefer fell running, <laughs> just because it's this kind of wonderful non-commercialized thing. As you see, like the same faces at races. It's really low key. Um, yeah, there's no messing around. It's just kind of okay, up to the top of the hill and run back down again and win a bottle of beer at the end. Um, and, and that's great. Um, so yeah, I've, I think like even, even though I seem to, at the moment when we're not in lockdown, spend a lot of time traveling to different races around the world, I really do love coming back to the UK and, and doing fell races. Um, somebody asked me what's my favorite race I've ever done. Um, it's really, really hard to choose um, because I seem to do with so many races. And, um, and yeah, there's different things about different races, which I love some. Um, it's the terrain or the place it's taken me or others. It's kind of sharing that experience with other people or meeting up with friends and things like that. 
Um, so that's yeah, it's a it's a really difficult one to to answer. Um, I do love fell races in the UK. I mean, I've kind of touched on that already, but um, yeah, I love to if it's a warm sunny uh, sunny day in the summer, um, cycle to a fell race, um, have a quick blast up and down a hill, get an ice cream, cycle back again. Yeah, it's, it's like just that's kind of my <laughs> perfect summer's day. Um, what I do like doing is spontaneous races. Um, I seem to have spend a, like, I just seem to stumble across races when I'm least meaning to. Um, quite a few years ago, I, um, I, I ran a race, um, well, I ran, I did a, a big cycle ride from Canada down to Mexico, um, and, um, came across various races on the way. Just before I started, um, I saw a poster for a 50k race, so I, um, randomly just did that the next day. I'd never run 50k before. Um, and um, then a another time um, I was cycling down through Washington State um, and I, I put my tent up in a random field to go to sleep. Um, woke up at the next morning and there was all this tape around my tent. Um, and I was like, oh, this is weird. Um, and it turned out I'd put my tent up on a cross country race, um, which was kind of weird um, and um, kind of cool like I spoke to the race organizer and he was like what on earth are you doing like sleeping on on this race course um, but he let me do the race and that was that was great um, and then like a month or so later I was down in Mexico um, and the people I was staying with were doing a, a race that day uh, or that evening in the desert so I randomly did this desert race after just cycling like really I'd cycled for about 10 hours or something and then did a race through the desert and won a turkey um which was possibly my my best prize I've won because I could it was just before Christmas and I could then give that turkey to the people I was staying with and they were absolutely delighted so that was really fun um so yeah I mean I, there's lots of people spend a lot of time preparing really um like meticulously for races but sometimes I quite enjoy um I quite enjoy just going like I don't know um just finding a race and doing it and I mean you you don't have to prepare like meticulously for everything you can just go out and do it and yeah you throw yourself in the deep end but that's that's how you learn and yeah I think it's it's that it's good fun um Someone asked me how I adapt to different climates and weather conditions. That was a question that came through earlier and actually it's just been posted now on on here um so I've I've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to run in all sorts of different climates. Um, and um, last year, for example, I went to Costa Rica for a, there was a week long race through the rainforest there. Um, and that was crazy. Like I'd, I'd been to the rainforest before, but I'd never done I'd never raced through the rainforest. Um, and I mean, I'd read things beforehand on what you should do. And I knew other people who'd done the race before. And some people were like, doing bike sessions in a sauna and, um, you know, that sort of thing, getting really used to the, the hot weather. Um, I mean, my plane to, to Costa Rica was cancelled because of the snow. Um, so it wasn't like I hadn't really done any preparation for it um, other than I went out like the week before, um, which I think helped. Um, and yeah, I think it helps to go, like if you're doing a race in a hot country, I think it helps to to try and, and assimilate those conditions, particularly if you're in the UK and it's quite rare that you're you're going to be experiencing desert-like or rainforest conditions, um, other than the rain maybe, but not rain and, and hot. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it helps, but also I think people can can put too much emphasis on that and kind of forget about their actual training. I think it helps just to be fit. Um, and ultimately your body will adapt to different conditions. Um, and I, I guess I'm quite fortunate. Mine does seem to adapt reasonably well. Um, when I was at, like living in France, for example, I did quite a few, what they call trail blanc, which is races just in the snow. So you're just running on snow. Um, and that's quite fun, but obviously that's very different to then, um, yeah, running running through a rainforest or um, last year I did the UTMB Oman, which was um, in the desert, um, which was super hot. Um, and I'd just come in from Nepal and I wasn't really used to the heat. Um, but yeah, you just get on with it. If you're reasonably fit, your body can cope. Um, and 
and yeah, I, I don't think it's a reason for people not to do a race. I mean, um, if you get the opportunity to go to somewhere with totally different climatic conditions, then great, go and do it. Go and seize that opportunity, I think. Um, hmm, another question, what else did I get? Some A random question, apple turnover or donut? And that one I've struggled to answer because I really do enjoy baked goods. Um, and so I went for a compromise of an apple donut, um, which would be which would be great. Um, and then, hmm, what next? Do I also have a job? Um, yes, yes, I do. Um, so I was previously working in international development, um, which meant that I was living in South Africa and traveling around Southern Africa for work on a climate smart agriculture program. Um, then did some work in East Africa. And then latterly, the last few years, um, I've been able to work remotely, um, which I don't, since this lockdown and everyone's been working for, well, people who can have been working from home. Um, and um, yeah, I think that it's, it's good that people like businesses and c companies have cottoned on to the fact that you can also in this day and age work from work from anywhere. Um, so, yeah, I was doing a lot of still working in international development, but working remotely, which meant that I could couple that with with doing races and traveling. Um, and then now, um, just actually mostly this last year, I've been doing a lot of, of translation work and subtitling. Um, which is which is good. It means I can do it from anywhere, um, and it means that um, yeah, I can I can mix that again with the travel and the running. Um, hmm, I've just seen somebody's posted one. I'll answer it now. Any guidance on post run, warm down, stretching? Um, I'm probably not the best person to ask about like how to train properly, <laughs> um, but um, definitely I think it helps. So like. Actually, this morning, um, I'm not really supposed to be running at the moment, but I did do a session this morning um, and um, I think it helps to after you've been running, particularly if you've been running hard, I think it helps to just run a, a, a couple of kilometers or 10 minutes, whatever, um, just at a, a much easier pace. And that's actually quite nice. Um, it's quite it's quite nice to just go easy, look around, enjoy the surroundings, the sort of things that you don't necessarily take in um, when you're when you're running really hard. Um, and then stretching, yes, the age old question of, of runners stretching. Um, we all know we should do it. Um, it's just making yourself do it. Um, so I often find, oh, I come back from a run and then I want to go and have breakfast because I'm hungry. <laughs> um, and I'm like, oh, I'll stretch after breakfast. And then after breakfast, I'll get some work in. And then it's, oh, I'll stretch later. And um, yeah, it's hard to sometimes make yourself do it. But I definitely think that it's it's worthwhile doing. Um, and there are there are loads of um, videos and things online on stretching. I find it quite useful to, to follow somebody doing it because it makes me do it. Um, so for example, like a yoga video or Pilates or something like that. Um, I think that's, that's quite useful. Um, rather than making myself do it myself, otherwise I'll probably just do a couple of minutes and then go back to whatever else I was doing. Um, but yeah, I do think it helps and you don't see immediate results, but in the long term, yes, I think it's, it's really, it is helpful. Um, However, sometimes when you're pressed for time, like I know if you've got like family commitments or, you know, like um, lots of work and things like that, and you're struggling to even get out for, for for your run, I would always choose to go for a run than like dedicate my time to the stretching and things, um, which, yeah, some people will say that's not the best solution, but that's my own. I get more joy out of running and pushing myself, getting those endorphins and things than um, than. Um, yeah, then um, kind of sitting and stretching or standing and stretching, however you stretch. Um, somebody asked me a question. I woke up this morning to this question. Um, was you're fearless. Um, do you ever get scared? Um, which I of course I get scared. Yes, <laughs> I, I do. Um, and I think um, I think it would be weird if we didn't get scared. Um, I think it's quite a natural reaction um, to something new. Like it could be going to a new place. It could be doing some like having a new experience. It could be having to talk to people on Instagram live. Um, like there's so many um, ways that you can get nervous about things or get scared about things. Um, but I think it's important not to let that fear stop you doing things. Um, so I like, I love to go off traveling and often I'm doing that on my own and um, yeah, going to, to new places and meeting often 
some very strange people um, and getting myself into strange situations. Um, but equally, um, like I'm not always wholly comfortable doing that, but um, like it's it's good experiences and that's that's how you learn and that's how you push yourself. I think you've got to keep pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, I mean, it's a bit like running, really. Um, so on a start line of a race, for example, or maybe even before a training session, some people get get nervous um, and you kind of you're stood on the start line. And you've got that little bit of apprehension. Um, but then as soon as the race starts, all of that disappears and you're in it, you're fine. And that's the same with with things like traveling or um, with yeah, all sorts of things. Um, you're kind of like scared of the unknown beforehand, but then once you're doing it, it's it's totally fine. Um, I've had some weird <laughs> situations, like often, yeah, when I am traveling on my own, um, often like um, I wrote down a couple of things, but like, um, yeah, I was like a few years ago, I decided to cycle the Danube on my own and stayed with um, lots of people on the way. There's a really good cycle touring website called Warm Showers um, where different people can host you. Um, so you come across a whole mixture of people. Um, and yeah, some of those people were a little bit dodgy. <laughs> um, but I think, um, I don't know, I have this faith in humanity that that the 99.9% .9 of people are good um, and that, yeah, like my mantra is the greatest risk in life is not to take risks. Yeah, I think you've got to go out and put yourself out there and and there's too much negative media about things. Um, and yeah, I think it's important to just go out there and realize that the world is a wonderful place full of wonderful people. Um, and yeah, that's why I like to kind of hitchhike around. People uh, think it's a bit crazy, um, but you meet great people. Um, and, and yeah, um, a few years ago, I went to, to Cuba as well on a trip. Um, and there I just, I hitched around um, just like slept under trees like a bit of a tramp um, but so many people like came to me and like tried to help me and I didn't really I didn't need help I just wanted to chat to people and find out about their lives and things like that there um, but yeah I mean I got into some situations where like once I was sleeping under a mango tree and this man came in the night um, and I was like oh my god there's a like creepy man this is it like he's gonna kill me um, but he just wanted to help me out. He was like, oh, come with me. I know a great place that you can sleep like. Um, so I just went to this like little tobacco house and slept under the tobacco leaves. And it was absolutely fine. No problem. But it's like having it's like putting your trust in people and um, and realizing that, yeah, the world isn't such a scary place. Um, and yeah, I think that's quite important. Um, but yeah, equally stay safe <laughs> maybe it's not always the best idea um to go wandering around alone under cuban mango trees at night um but yeah um i think in some someone else asked as well about how you can stay safe when you're on long runs um and i guess particularly as a woman if you're running in a maybe in a um like in a more urban area um then you can you can get like wolf whistles and you can get like people seem quite aggressive and when I was um living overseas as well I, I had quite a lot I was traveling a lot for work and I was in a lot of cities um mostly in Africa and um I would go running in the morning and sometimes I did feel quite threatened just because you're you're an oddity and so people people were not necessarily threatening they're just saying things to you because you're there and you're a woman and they're not used to seeing women running in the streets um but yeah I mean that's just something you either have to put up with or find another alternative. Uh, oh, I, th it just, I just got a, a notification saying the live video had paused, but it seems to be back now. Um, I'll, I'll just f carry on what I, uh, what I was saying about like um, staying safe in the hills. I think it's really important, like stay, staying safe on long runs. I think if you, particularly if you're going into the hills, it's really important um, to make sure that. Um, yeah, to make sorry, it's really important to make sure that you've you've got enough things with you. You've got enough um, you've got enough food and drink with you. You've got enough warm layers. Like the weather can change dramatically um, when you're um, when you're out in the in the hills. Um, and so, what might seem like a really nice sunny day in, um, down in the valley could be horrendous up on the top. Um, equally, just like checking the weather forecast. Sometimes, you know, if you're doing an out and back run, um, then 
you might feel amazing for the first half and it turns out you've got a 50 mile an hour wind behind you but if you've then got to turn around and come back again um and you're already a little bit depleted like um that's going to take you a lot longer than if it was um if it was just a really calm day and so it's just making sure that you're prepared um not just relying on like it's all very well having like a snazzy watch that shows you the way i have one um but i don't like to rely on it um because um just in case something were to happen like it's it's really bad to just follow a blue line on a watch and then you have you would have no clue where you are um so i think yeah it's important to have a map a map and a compass and know how to use them all the kit um tell people where you're going as well so that if something were to happen um people know where to look for you um if i'm going like far away from um from somewhere well somewhere i don't know i would take my phone with me as well just i mean suppose you were to break your ankle or something like that and you're in the middle of nowhere um then other than kind of crawling your way out um i guess it would be useful if you were able to call someone if there was any signal um but yeah i, I do i do also enjoy going out without my phone so um yeah i would just take it on kind of longer runs far, far away um i just saw one comment on a big shout out it's fading away um, to the calder valley fell runners and todd harriers in lockdown um so that's my look there my local clubs um so I'm I'm currently in here in Yorkshire and that's where I I grew up um and um yeah I've been running with Calder Valley for for quite a while now and my my dad used to run for Todd Harriers and they're the, they're the people that I see at all the local fell races and and that's what I absolutely love um so a big shout out to them hello um moving on to more questions um I wrote them down uh what do I do to prevent injury? Um, I'm not the best person to ask about um, about how to prevent injuries, given that I always seem to be a bit injured. Um, I broke my foot last year and it's kind of been this ongoing cycle of, of always being a bit broken um, and me supposedly resting it, but continuing to run. Um, I guess not falling over is a good way not to injure yourself. <laughs> the last couple of years I've had stitches a few times in my in my legs um from from falling over only in scotland um but yeah i would advise not falling over um and then like i guess doing other things other than just running so if you have a bike then try and get out on your bike as well that's really helpful um and it's really nice you can you can travel like so much further on a bike than you can running um and you're putting so much less stress through your body um so i really enjoy going on little biking adventures um which yeah it's it's good um, and then I guess if you if you really do have like quite a bad injury, it's just having patience and and giving it that time to heal. And yes, it's really frustrating um, to be fit and just see you kind of see this fitness disappearing. Um, but there's nothing else you can do. It's just like thinking long term and thinking, OK, well, do I still want to be running in a few years time or do I only want to be running for the next like a few weeks, months? Um, yeah. And. Yeah, I, I guess especially now um, with uh, with most of the races being cancelled, it's quite a good time um, to to let any problems or niggles and things just kind of settle down without that pressure of, oh, well, I've got to be fit for this race. Um, and also just having some perspective on racing in general. Um, I think like we shouldn't be afraid to be on a start line, like not as fit as we potentially could be. Um, just because, um, yeah, I mean, just um like it's better i think it's better to be running even if if it's a little bit slower um than to not be able to run at all and believe me i've <laughs> i've had both um so at the moment i'm on this kind of i'd rather be running and running slowly than not being able to run at all because i spent well yeah a lot of time not being able to run um the whole of february i was like in a gym in glasgow um it was a little bit soul destroying <laughs> um but um yeah i think yeah just let things heal i should i'm also saying this to myself so that i learn um but, but, but how to make long run safe i've already answered that one um how to keep fitness during lockdown um again there are so many videos of people doing exercises body weight things 
like juggling with their children um i think that um yeah just go check them out go and like type in on youtube anything you want to improve and you will find a video of how to do it i can't vouch for its um quality but hey it's worth worth a try um do i do other sports yes cycling i've talked about that um i also like when i'm in the mountains i love just going out hiking well actually i never Hiking is very American. Um, I love going walking, um, and um, yeah, there's not like there's nothing I enjoy more than taking my tent or taking my sleeping bag and a bivy bag and kind of heading up into the hills and going and having a night out. Um, that's my sort of night out. <laughs> um, some people go to the disco. I go to the mountains. Um, so yeah. Um, like yeah just being outside like i i like to do little bits of climbing but i'm not very good um, my arms are like really weedy um but yeah um someone asked uh do i still want to do a bob graham and do i want to get the record mm -hmm. um so i've as i said i've been a fell runner kind of all my life um and there's a certificate up on the wall at home of my dad doing the bob graham um, back in the 90s um, and like growing up reading fell running magazines you you kind of you know about the folklore that surrounds the Bob Graham um, I've never I'd never done it because I always thought oh it's a bit too far um, and also it's a bit too far to do right in the middle of what is effectively my kind of sky running series um, or sky running season and the main running season um, but last year I thought okay right just actually do this like you mean life's too short you never know if i might lose my legs or something <laughs> it might happen and um i might not be able to run again next year so i felt thought okay right just do it next uh, last year um so i i went and um looked over the route a lot and and wrecked it and and i had a, a weekend kind of planned in october um but then on well Fortunately slash unfortunately, um, I got um, into the top 10 of this um, Golden Trails World Series, um, which meant that I, I got to go and run in the final in Nepal. Um, so actually, I ended up going to Nepal um, that same weekend. Um, I'd planned to, planned to do the Bob Graham um, and then had more foot woes and things like that, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I thought, okay, lockdown, like now there's no races. Now's maybe a good time. Um, but I mean, I'm based in Yorkshire right now and, um, it's, I, I shouldn't be going to the Lake District to go and run around the Bob Graham right now. So nope, I'm not doing it now. Um, hopefully at some point when restrictions lift a little bit and we're able to travel a little bit more freely, um, within the UK, then hopefully that would give me the chance to go um go and have a have a go at, at at the round um i'm not trying to get a record or anything like that i'd keep it really low key if i did it um i don't want people to know about it necessarily because just because people would be like oh holly might try and get the record and that's not my intention at all um it would be to go round and do it um ideally with with a good group of friends um and i think that's what it's all about it's about sharing time with people in the mountains um and yeah, and I think you earn your Bob Graham as well. I think you you can't just turn up and, and expect to be able to do it. So I'd want to go and spend more time up in the lakes um, as well, just kind of checking over all the best sheep trods and things which have probably grown over by now. Um, just last bits, few bit, last few bits of questions. Um, do I ever run well after beer and or wine? Um, the night before a race, yeah, fine. I wouldn't put it like I'll have happily have a beer, maybe not like millions, or I'll have a glass of wine. I don't think it's it affects you. Um, I've I've done a few beer miles, um, not always particularly well. Um, so I think that I haven't. I can to answer that, I haven't run particularly well immediately after beer and wine, um, but maybe give it twelve hours and then it's okay. Um, what's my favourite time of day for a run? Um, I like to run in the morning, um, the first thing I do in the, in the day, just because then it's done and I feel good for the rest of the day. Um, sometimes that doesn't happen because work comes in or like I'm too hungry and eat breakfast instead. Um, but yeah, I think morning is the best.
favorite trail snack um i used to get laughed at because i would like turn up to races with like a big bag of sweets um or some jam sandwiches and that would be what i would eat in a race um or i have like this this big bag full of gels and bars that people like have donated to me over the years most of them out of date um but so i've always been like i'm like working my way through those um but then last year i was lucky enough to get the support of a, a company called active life energy which is really great um so they give me so many bars and gels and things um which is great um i've just seen a comment pop up there of jelly babies yes i agree also excellent um and haribo tang fastics really good as well there's something about that acidic thing um yeah i'll just when i mean people who've run long distances you know like you can you just eat anything any any everything tastes good um particularly actually like salty foods so um i found doing long races especially when it's really hot that i'm just craving crisps um potatoes i i was li when i was living in south africa i did quite a few races which were really hot and um i just remember coming to aid stations and stuffing my bag um with like little new like salty new potatoes <laughs> um which was uh, very novel at the time but like actually really great um i would recommend taking potatoes around they're not the necessarily the lightest but yeah um what else da, da, da. um oh black toenails that was a weird question but actually maybe not weird <laughs> um how do you avoid getting black toenails i currently have no big toenails on either foot um because they fell off um, but I guess it's, it's, if your shoes are not quite tight enough and you're run, if you're just pounding down hills, then obviously over, um, over a little while, that's, it's going to have an impact on your toes. It also depends on the shape of your feet, um, as well. Some people's toes stick out more than others. Um, and yeah, I guess like it's not a major problem. Um, sometimes they're really painful. I was doing a race in Patagonia in December and I was having to wear hiking boots in the race because of my weird broken foot. Um, and yeah, I got like after the first day, I just, I couldn't even walk properly because my toes were so painful. Um, but yeah, I got somebody to drain them. You can drain your toenail. Um, and that just takes eases the pressure off it um and that's really helpful so yeah there's nothing you can do about it um it's just one of those things and um treat them like great souvenirs it means you've been running hard um if you've if you've got <laughs> got dodgy toes and feet um then i think probably my last question i had um was um what are the races i plan for 2021 um and any midterm races um midterm i mean who knows <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen next um i guess um yeah it's just making the most of what we've got um it's it's a privilege to be able to run and i think like it's important to to hold on to that and think okay well like even if i can only run a few kilometers around where i live then so be it like at least i can do that so many people in the world can't do that and we have to remember that running is a privilege and it's um and to be thankful for that and not get het up about what we can't do um yeah so i'll race when races start again <laughs> um but until then i'm i'm just kind of doing doing my own thing um enjoying the the sunshine in the uk which is very rare but seems to be like constant at the moment it's really nice um and then in 2021 i was asked um like well quite a lot of people asked what my plans were but um one was like if i could only do one race in 2021 what would it be um and this year well i had lots of races planned um but one i really wanted to do was called the piera menta Eti, um which is in france um and it's a race you do with a partner um over three days um really technical um there's lots of kind of ropes and via ferratas and things on some some parts you have to wear a, a climbing harness um and yeah i just think it would be really fun to do that race um i i like stage races which are over a few days because you get to to know the other people you're running with and then yeah i guess doing a race i've not done many races like running with a partner um and and that's definitely something i want to do more of because i think it adds a 
a fun dynamic to it, even if I'm maybe not the most fun person when I'm like trying to run really hard. Um, I don't like, I'm not particularly chatty. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully I'll get to do that race and, and lots more. Um, yeah, there's so, so many out there. Um, but yeah, that would, that's, that's great. Um, so that's the end of the questions. Um, there's been some weird comments on here um, that I've been trying to ignore. Um, and yeah, um, I think I've actually like gone well over the time I was supposed to, supposed to do it. Um, but I've been told I am supposed to say at the end of this uh, that you should share this video with your friends and tag sports shoes in your own no fun standing still at home stories. So make sure you do that. Um, and I'm going to log off now and go and do some work and get some lunch so thank you for thank you for joining in um if anyone has any other questions um that you didn't get chance to or if you're watching this back not on the live stream which i presume a lot of people will be doing um then don't like don't hesitate to get in touch with either myself or with sports shoes um and and then i'll definitely be able to give you an answer to those um, so thanks again and happy running everybody. Stay safe through these difficult times. Um, but most of all, try and stay positive. Um, yeah, and enjoy some sunshine if you can do. Bye.